If you consider yourself a clever person, you ought to see this movie. It's one of the best screwball comedies ever made. It's inspired countless imitators and sequels. What is it? It's the 1936 movie, My Man Godfrey, coming up next. <laughs> It's one of those rare comedies that I find just about everything in it still works and applies to today's world. That's rare because comedy so much depends upon context, historical and cultural context especially. But somehow this movie I think transcends at least slightly its own time period, the Great Depression in the 1930s in America. Movie stars William Powell as what's called a forgotten man. It basically means he's a homeless man living at a dump in a major American city. I think it's New York City. Well a bunch of rich people show up at the dump and say they need to have a man come with them to fulfill their scavenger hunt. They're participating in a ridiculous contest in which they need to bring one of these forgotten men back to a hotel. They offer to pay the William Powell character five dollars, which is about a hundred dollars in today's money, but he's got a lot of self-respect so he says no to the first woman who asks him. But then her sister comes up and is much nicer to him and so he agrees to go with her. Well, it turns out she wins the scavenger hunt, the rich person contest, and she's kind of infatuated with him, so she asked him to become the family butler. Well, since he has no job and no prospects and he's living at the dump, he agrees. And thus begins the plot premise where you have a rich, crazy family, an American family that's at once childish and yet rich, and then this dignified, down-on-his-luck butler. Butler's name of the title is Godfrey, and he's succeeding many other butlers, some of whom have not spent even a day at this family's house because they're so insane. Well, he begins working for the family, and on the one hand, one of the sisters is in love with him. But the other sister, well, he rejected her at the dump, so she's got a serious grudge against him and tries to get him fired. The mother of the family is crazy. Are you insinuating that I rode a horse up the front steps last night? Father, all he can do is bark and complain. What this family needs is discipline. And then they have a live-in protege named Carlo. Look, Irene, look at Carlo. Isn't that lovely? Oh, is that clever, Irene? Look! Anyway, this butler Godfrey ends up putting up with a whole lot of craziness and hijinks. But he keeps it together, he's dignified, and he ends up helping the family, as you might guess. No need to spoil this movie, but what I like about it is that you can watch it at least two ways. One is you can just dive in and enjoy it for its lines and its witty banter. No need to think about the movie, just go from scene to scene. Every scene is good in this, especially the two main actors, William Powell and Carol Lombard. Well, you want me to remain on here as butler, don't you? Oh, of course. And I want to justify your faith in me by being a very good butler. And in time, perhaps filling the void created by the death of your late lamented Pomeranian. Oh, I've forgotten all about him. He had fleas anyway. Besides, you're different. You use big words and you're much cuter. But this movie also has some social commentary, as you might imagine. It's a commentary on rich versus poor, and a pretty simple one, but I found it somewhat fair at least all around. Sure, the poor people may be smarter, the rich people dumber in this movie, but there's differentiations within the rich family, and they don't have it totally easy. Plus, the poor Godfrey character, well, he's got a mysterious past, and you might be able to guess what that is. So the social commentary is about the rather common movie idea, especially in Great Depression era movies, of wealth inequality. But it's really about behavior. The reason why this family behaves in such a childish way is so undignified according to this movie. I think this movie wants the rich to have a sense of noblesse oblige. The idea that the nobility ought to help has an obligation to help out the rest of society in some way, shape, or form. Even though the family is paying a 60 to 70% tax rate to the government. Now, if you've ever read any of P.G. Woodhouse's novels, you've kind of got the flavor of My Man Godfrey. In fact, the screenwriter directly brings up the name of Jeeves in this movie at least once. And you know from those Woodhouse books that Jeeves is the noble, dignified butler who will help the family family out behind the scenes and make things orderly and make them work. Meanwhile, the rich people, in the case of the Woodhouse novels, Bertie Wooster is just crazy and doesn't know what to do with his life and lives totally luxuriously as a member of the leisure class. Same setup with this movie, same kind of hijinks and jokes. But there is a conservative element to Woodhouse, I think, just as there is with this movie, which is that the rich need to be upheld and the social order needs to be maintained, although with more equality for the poor people. At least that's how I read this movie. And the jokes, well, some of them are just goofy. <laughs> That's a very pretty tune, Carlo. What's the name of it? Oh, 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 that's the 
just the name, too. I thought it was just the words. I like it because the words are all the same. It makes it so easy to remember. That's probably why the Star Spangled Banner is so confusing. Nobody seems to know the words. <laughs> and some of them are actually very risque. Just leave everything to Godfrey. Godfrey will take care of everything. Now, you just sit right down there like a good girl, and in just a minute, you'll forget that you had any troubles. <laughs> I think if you're talking about screwball comedies, which are, you know, Hollywood comedies where just crazy things happen, crazy characters interact, and it's all about the wittiness and the banter between the characters. The screenwriters and screwball comedies have a license to be as silly and as funny as they want to be. I love these kinds of movies. I wish there were more of them today. And there's no doubt, actually, I think My Man Godfrey could be remade. It was remade, I think, in the 1950s with David Niven playing the Godfrey character. And variations on the wise butler, wise maid, wise servant versus the crazy rich people they serve have been stories for a long time. But it's probably true that there haven't been many better than My Man Godfrey, which is a movie that, if you're willing to listen and try to keep up with its fast pace, will make you laugh and will be a fun experience. This could be a movie for both sexes, for male and female. It might be a decent date movie if you're willing to put up with the fact that, yep, yeah, it's in black and white, and yeah, it was made in the 1930s. But hey, who cares? A good movie is a good movie. So I highly recommend My Man Godfrey to you. I think anybody I know would actually like this movie. Have you seen this movie? What do you think of it? Please leave us a comment. And if you haven't, please do subscribe to this channel to help support what we're doing here. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.